Back to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Uh, good, to, good to reconnect with Terry. Uh, welcome. I met uh, your mom uh, years ago. We were going door to door, door knocking. And I, as I recall, if my memory serves me uh, right, I believe she was living in uh, an apartment complex off of Lamb. Yes, Brookstones. And, and uh, of course, uh, now Brookstone, since those days, has put up uh, iron bars. Uh, you, you can't get in there like we used to get in there. Uh, and, uh, and so, um, um, and yeah, I, rem I remembered all. She sure did. Amen. I love. Yeah. Hey, man, Terry. Well, God bless you. And don't you know your mom's rejoicing in heaven? Praise the Lord. They get all the good news up there. And amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. Well, those are uh, good, good memories. Uh, they are for sure. Uh, yes, John, the gospel, uh, chapter 15, uh, Jesus uh, in verse 1 says, I am the true vine. There's a lot of false <laughs> vines, but he is the true vine. And my father is the husband man. He owns it all. And um, the uh, Lord Jesus Christ is, is in the vineyard uh, doing what his heavenly Father has set before him to do. And uh, then he, in verse number two, he speaks about the branch, every branch. And, you know, if you know Jesus, that's what, that's what you are. You're, you're the branch. And uh, he says, every branch in me, not just any branch or a branch, but a branch in Jesus. You know Jesus, you've believed in him, you've, uh, you're trusting in him for the salvation of your soul, the forgiveness of all of your sins. Uh, you're in Christ. Um, and, uh, but he says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. And why does he prune every fruit bearing branch that it may bring forth? more fruit, you know, um, purge, prune, we, you know, clean it to remove everything um, that is getting in the way of, that is hindering uh, a greater uh, uh, fruit and uh, now you want to mark your place somehow, keep your place. I'll put a Bible ribbon here in John chapter 15, but because uh, I want you to look at the Bible as its own best commentary. So First Peter, First uh, Peter chapter one. So we think about this cleanse, cleansing and purging. That's God's stated purpose for every uh, child of God is to bear more fruit. And so there's, uh, there's, for that to happen, there'll be some purging. 
Um, 1 Peter now, chapter 1 and verse 22. Um, Seeing ye have purified your, your souls in obeying. So how are we purified, purged, cleaned by obedience, obeying the truth? Through the Spirit, see the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the work of God. It's all God's work. Uh, you're the branch, and God does, he does the work, including the purging, the pruning. And uh, seeing you've purified your souls in obeying the truth, how do I purify my soul? Obedience to the truth. Uh, what is the truth? Thy, thy word is truth. Uh, Jesus is the truth. Obeying him purges, cleanses. And it results, it results in more fruit, in greater fruit. And that's what, that's what the husbandman, when he goes to the vineyard, don't you know that's what he's looking for? He's looking for fruit. Of course, the fruit uh, that he that he's looking for are uh, precious souls, like your soul, my soul. He's he's looking for a great harvest. He, the husbandman uh, hath great patience. He's waiting for the harvest. Uh, James tells us. So, uh, verse twenty-two: unto unfeigned love of the brethren, and. Uh, and that is, that is his command, and that's what we're to be obedient to. Um, unto unfeigned love of unfeigned, not fakery, not put on, unfeigned. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a show, it's, it's sincere, it's real, you know. Um, and isn't that interesting that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Why love? It always comes back to love, doesn't it? Why? Why the emphasis on love? Why? Because remember, God is what? That's what God is. And, uh, uh, you know, so, um, yeah, uh, so, and by the way, what is, what is the first fruit listed in the list of fruit? Remember that? We looked at that. Galatians, was it Galatians chapter 5? Right at the top of the list is what fruit? Love. See? It's right at the top of the list. Um, so, uh, isn't that interesting? Do you, ever, do you ever stop to think about why that God put that? He could have put, he could have put joy at the top. He could have put peace. could have put meekness. could have put temperance. But on that list of fruit, right at the top, he puts love. See? And uh, wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? Have you ever, have you ever uh, had occasion... Uh, anywhere you've ever lived to, uh, you know, to have access to a fruit tree that is heavy laden with uh, ripe fruit. Has that ever happened to any of you? Yeah? You know what it's like to pluck uh, tree ripened fruit? You know? I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, depending on the fruit, juicy sweet oh my uh, and um, you know that that's the attraction the fruit is the attraction yeah you know? right I mean, how many how many of you would go over to a, a a tree a fruit how many of you would go over to a fruitless tree no fruit is is I mean, is I mean any right there's no nothing there nothing there for um, no sustenance, no nourishment. No, um, 
Jesus did that. We looked at that Wednesday night. He did that for three years in a row, the fig tree, remember? And uh, he said, cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Um, and the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the worker, the worker there said, you know, let me, let me fertilize it. Uh, give me one more year. And if at the end of one more year, it's still fruitless, then well, let's cut it down. Um, love, there it is. There it is, uh, 1 Peter uh, 1 and verse 22. Um, that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Um, now, pruning, purging, cleaning. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, please. Ephesians chapter 5. I... Um, this is a remarkable passage in God's Word. One we should not gloss through or give a cursory uh, look at, but really take some time to meditate on this. Um, you know, shouldn't be this way, doesn't have to be this way, but far too many uh, uh, Christians are uh, are fruitless and and frustrated and miserable um, and their whole Christian experience um, and I I think I think it's because we we need to we need to get back in touch with what God says about being fruitful and how that happens and Quite honestly, a lot of uh, spiritual leaders have uh, have uh, attempted to um, guilt, <laughs> leverage, uh, push <laughs> God's people uh, to uh, make it happen. Just you know, just do it. And, uh, you know, fruitfulness, uh, no, it's, it's not me and it's not you, it's him. It's him. And, uh, and, and, and that's how fruitfulness happens. Um, it's, it's an inflow, outflow, overflow of him because you're connected, abiding in Christ. You're attached, you're attached to the vine. The branch is attached and so the branch doesn't have to make it happen. It happens, and he's doing it. You know, um, there's a difference. There's a difference. Uh, the key is to be attached to Jesus. Look, look at, but um, here it is, Ephesians 5. I hope you found it. Ephesians 5 and verse 26 and 27 <clears throat> that he might uh, sanctify and cleanse it. Here's the uh, purging, cleansing. With, and how does, now look, how does he cleanse his child uh, or the branch? How is the branch purged or pruned? Uh, and of course, yes, you know, we're talking about the church. He says, uh, with the washing of water, by the what? Oh, oh, this is how we're cleansed. The word of God washes us, cleanses us. Um, God, God tells us uh, what, what he's pleased with. God lets us know by his word what he's displeased with. And... Um, Look at verse 27, um, that he might present it, it referring to the church, the branch, to himself a glorious church, not having what? Spot or wrinkle. 
and uh, or any such thing, but but that it should be holy and without blemish. It's kind of like uh, a bride's wedding gown. I I tell you, I've been to a lot of weddings. I've officiated a good number of weddings. And I declare, to this point in time, I've never seen a bride show up to her wedding and appear before the groom in a uh, blemished, spotted, or wrinkled wedding gown. I've never seen it. I'm, I'm telling you, it's spotless. It's unblemished. It's not a wrinkle on it. It's just like a picture. Beautiful. And uh, so... The Word of God accomplishes that, and it's by the Word of God that we are attached to Jesus, you know. We're the branch. We're the branch. And that's how we're attached. Go to Psalm 119 and verse number 9. Uh, and, uh, you know, how many of you, uh, we think a little bit more about this purging, cleansing. How many of you have ever gone to, ever, ever had occasion to uh, go to a... Uh, Oh, I don't know, a cafe or a uh, place to, you know, have a sit-down meal. And uh, the, uh, you know, the glass, the glass. Have you, have you ever had this? Have you ever had a glass? The previous uh, patron, the, the, whatever the cleansing process was, it did not remove like the lipstick off of the rim of the glass, or, or maybe it was chapstick, you know, or, or maybe, maybe even worse yet, it was uh, food matter that, you know, uh, the person put the glass to their mouth while they still had food in their mouth, and some of the food attached and adhered to the rim of the glass. Now, it went through the process, they, you know, sure enough, put it through the wash, washing process, but it just didn't remove all of those, uh, uh, has it ever happened to anybody? Or what about a uh, what about a, an eating utensil like a fork or a knife or a spoon? You know, and how, how many of you have ever had to say to the wait, waitress or the waiter, uh, "May I please have a clean glass or a clean fork?" I mean, uh, I mean, uh, as good as the food looks on the rim of the glass or the fork, I'd prefer to begin my meal with a clean one, you know? You, you're very tactful, of course, about it, you, you know? I mean, hey, life happens, you know what happens, right? See, but, but you understand, you want, you want to begin with a clean, a clean, pure? Do you know that's the way God is? Uh, God, when, he, when he's looking for He's looking for a branch. In case that's what we're looking at here. Uh, when he's looking for a tool to do his work, he wants a clean tool. Uh, you know, and, and uh, some, I've heard, I think Jason say that, uh, that his dad doesn't appreciate uh, tools being used, but then return to the toolbox without first having been cleaned, all the grease, all the grime, uh, whatever. Uh, his dad wants to begin the job with a clean tool. So, you know, you borrow my tools, clean them, leave them clean like you found them, you know, see? And, uh, but look at this, uh, Psalm 119 and verse number nine, and uh, see, it's just so important we understand the ways of God, how God, what he, you know, how he works. It, um, there's a lot of people, a lot of Christians that are just trying to, trying to make it happen. And that's not how, that's not how it works. It's not you making anything happen. It's God doing it through you. Do you understand the difference? I hope you. I hope you do. This is so important, and I, and the Lord just keeps bringing me back here. Um, 
you know, any, any fruit in your life on your branch, uh, you know, it's not you, it's him. And it's on your branch because you're attached, you're connected to him. And he did it, not you. He put the fruit there. You're just the, you're the, uh, it's like wiring, you know, the current flows through. It, it's not the wire, it, it's the source. The wire doesn't do anything. The wire, the wire, the wire has to be attached, right? The wire has to be attached for the light fixture on the other end to light up. But, but the wire's doing nothing in and of itself. It's just attached. You know, so any way you, you know, uh, want to frame it, it's, it's all him. Uh, it's all him. And uh, we, boy, we need to get that. Uh, what is our part? What do we do? What do we do then? Stay attached. Stay attached. And then he'll do it. He'll do it. Instead of you trying to make it happen. Instead of you trying to put the fruit of love, joy, peace, temperance, long-suffering, goodness, gentle, meek, gentleness, meekness. Instead of you trying to put that on the display, which, by the way, defines religion. That's religion. Is the person trying to make it happen. You know, it's not religion. It's a relationship. A relationship um, is, uh, and it's it's him. It's him doing it. See, there's such a difference. See, most of the population of the world that has anything at all to do with any kind of a religion is trying to trying to make it happen, and they're very they're very miserable. They're very frustrated. You know. And by the way, you ever you ever hear the term religious burnout or they flame out? They flame out, they burn out. <laughs> yeah. They're trying to do and accomplish something that only God can do and accomplish. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. They crash and burn. At some point, they crash and burn, you know. The religion just keeps, you know, keeps after them. Hey, you got to produce. Hey, you got to do it. Hey, you're going to be a part of, you know, this religion. These are the expectations. <laughs> and you got to get out there and you got to produce. Well, that only works so long. Uh, the world is filled with religious ca casualties of religion, you know, and no. Look at this Psalm 119, though, and verse number nine, uh, purged cleansing. See, uh, God cleanses, prunes uh, by the word. That's wherewithal shall a young man do what? Cleanse. Cleanse his way. Verse 9. Cleanse. How, how do you clean up? It's important to be clean. Why? Because God won't use a dirty vessel. No. No more than you'll sit down at a dinner table at some diner and use somebody else's dirty, unclean fork. He's the same way. <laughs> may, I, may I have a clean fork? Whatever. Um... By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Now, I don't know that I can adequately explain how God does this. I know it's by the agency of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, and when you read God's word, the Holy Spirit the, in tandem with the word of God is scrubbing your soul. Cleansing you. Why? Why? so that the husbandman will be inclined to use you. See, you know, it's, it, folks, we need to get back to the Word. 
we need to we need to get into the word we need to stay in the word and um, are you saying we need to get more focused on him on Jesus than on uh, uh, everything else exactly what I I'm finding the word of God saying yes we do yes we do and then he'll start he'll start doing it he'll start doing it and when he starts doing whatever whatever it is that appertains to his work the you know Jesus by the way who who builds the church does the church build the church who's the church builder according to God's word Jesus says I will do what I think God's word says I will build my church He's the church builder. You're the tool. And, and, and if he finds you cleansed, pruned, purged, as a result of time you've spent with him, then, um, see, look, church, we're not the church builder. He is. But isn't it wonderful to, that the Heavenly Father would so to speak, pick you up and use you in his work of building his church because you're pruned, you're cleansed, you're purged, because you've, you've spent time with him and his word. Wouldn't it be wonderful for God to use you to do it instead of you trying to make it happen? You trying to, you know, which, by the, by the way, if you want to know the spelling of the word misery, that <laughs> you trying to make it happen that's misery. Instead of God, God flow, inflowing, outflowing, overflowing, because you're abiding in Christ. So let's get back then to John chapter number 15, please, the gospel. Of, and I appreciate the help so much. God bless uh, everyone <clears throat> that is uh, helping in by prayer. And, and, you know, when, you know, and, and God will let you know when he wants to use you. He'll let you know how he wants to use you. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll let you know. And, and God bless all of you that are, that are saying yes to him when he, when he says, I want to use you to build a fireworks booth. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that's a Holy Spirit. Hey, hey, you know, I, I want to use you to, uh, Assemble the fireworks booth, I, or I want to use you to uh, serve uh, the young people in uh, by, you know, by uh, serving there at the fireworks booth and helping them, helping them be able to go to camp. Uh, but you know what? It's still him. It's all him. And if it's all him, who, who then gets all the glory? Who gets all the credit? Who gets all the praise? It would be him, because it's all him. Um, our fulfillment, our joy, then, is just to be used by him. Uh, and that gives great meaning and purpose to our life. Now, <clears throat> back here in uh, John, so... <clears throat> And uh, now you're clean, verse 3, through the word which I have spoken unto you, God says. Boy, that, you, I mean, he, he just puts it out there plain and, and, and uh, it's powerful and yet it's very simple. He says, uh, <clears throat> now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's your Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable. And uh, <clears throat> now, look at this vital instruction, verse number four. What is the one thing he says to the believer to do? Abide in me. Abide in me. The word abide means to remain attached to to remain attached to the vine. 
And the reason, he cites the reason. He says, uh, as, uh, as, the, as the branch cannot do what? You, uh, folks, you, see how vain, see how vain religion is? You got, you got religions attempting to bear fruit apart from and without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Huh. And Jesus says, you cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. And he says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Sometimes we get our roles mixed up. We, we get a little confused, you know. Um, he says, I am the vine. The vine is the source of life. He says, that's what I am. That's what I do. And then he says, you are the branches. That's another way of saying, stop trying to do my work. I'm the vine, you're the branches. You know, you got, a, you got a host of religions trying to do his work, trying to reverse roles, trying to take his place. No, no, no. He says, I am the vine, you're the branches. <laughs> Let's get this straight. He says, I'm the one, I'm the source, I'm the cause, you're the effect. Let's, let's not get confused here. You know, um, verse 5, greater clarity. He says, he that abideth in me and I in him. What, what will the result be? The same bringeth forth much fruit. Now, you know God would never lie to you. Never. And this is the way, this is the way biblical Christianity, this is God's design, it's God's blueprint, it's, it, this is the way it works. Um, if there's no fruit, can I, can, if there's no fruit based upon these scriptures, is it possible then to come to a reason or a conclusion for fruitlessness? Well, what is the, what, if, there's, if there's fruitlessness, no fruit, what then, based upon these scriptures, tell me what would the reason be? Not abiding in Christ. Not abiding in Christ. That's the main thing. Thank you. Yeah. Not abiding in Christ. Um, and now he says, I am the vine. You're, you're the branches. He says, he that abideth in me and I in him, attached, attached by, by this, by this, abiding. And this. I, I believe prayer is a connecting point with God. God's word is a point of connection with God. Uh, bringeth forth much fruit for, now look what he says in verse 5, for without me, how much can you do? Nothing, 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 no thing, compound word. Without me, you can do no thing, nothing, nothing, nothing of eternal worth, nothing of eternal value, nothing that glorifies God, nothing, Jesus says. It, you know what? It's him. It's all him. What, what, what is my, my part? 
as, as uh, his uh, child. Uh, I'm a branch. I'm a branch. A branch, a branch connects, is connected. A branch is, is the outgrowth uh, from the vine. See? <clears throat> the life is in the vine. Everything, everything uh, required to produce fruit at the end of the branch is in the vine. And of course, uh, Jesus taught us uh, uh, the ultimate source. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jesus says, I and my Father are one. The Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father. All of it emanates from the Heavenly Father. God the Father, the husbandman. Remember, he's the husbandman. God the Son, he's the vine. And you're the branch. There it is. Um, now, uh, verse 6, he says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. I mean, can you look? Here's, I've got a little sample here. Here's a, here's a branch that is not abiding. It's unattached. And uh, that is such a picture of, uh, that is such a picture. Uh, can you imagine, can you imagine this in the name of religion producing anything? You know what, you know what this is? Do you know what, do you know what this features, what this pictures? Death. This is, this is dead. It's dead, folks. You see? Now look at that. I mean, I mean, you might want to take it home and hang it on your wall. I don't. <laughs> um, they're burned in the fire. But he says in verse number seven, if, 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 now that now the word if it's very important to understand if means what it means you have a choice if and this is a choice you make how frequently do you make this choice daily every day and every day you must you're confronted by the choice do I do I am I going to remain attached or am I going to wing it on my own today? Every day. Every day is a conscious, deliberate decision and choice to connect, to abide, find a place to spend with him in his word um, and in, in prayer. Um, Look, it's not about you doing it. It's about him doing it through you. Do, you. do you understand the difference? This is really, in reality, all any of us are going to do. Uh, this is it. Look at that picture. That's it. Uh, when we, we think we can just do it on our own, who are we kidding who are we kidding? Wow. <laughs> He's, he, you know, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the, what is he? He's the life. He's the life. And uh, <clears throat> if you abide in me, and, and, and watch this, there's something very important here, and I want you to see this. I think it's incredibly important. Uh, it really caught my attention. 
as I reread these passages, he says, if ye abide in me and <clears throat> my words abide in you. Now, what is the promise he makes to those that will abide in him and his words abide in you? What promise does he make to that child of God? Go ahead and read it. What does he promise there? Something about asking? What's he say there? Let me get that. Um, ye shall ask what ye will. And what does he promise? It, it shall be done unto you. Is that a promise by Jesus to answer the prayer? I take that as a promise. I'm going to answer your prayer. Now, um, here's what happens when you abide Whose word is this? This is God's word. From whose mind did this come? Whose mind? Whose heart? This is God's word. So here's what happens when, when you take in his mind, his mind, and you fill up on his mind, what happens to your mind? What happens to your? Your thinking uh, now is his thinking. Now, when you're thinking like he thinks, and now you're praying, do you understand, do you comprehend when you're thinking like he thinks because you've been attached, this is flowing into you. This, let this, let this what be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, it, it means, this is a decision you make. It's an act of your will every single day. Now, you have his mind, and with his mind, you go to prayer, asking. God says, when your prayers reflect the mind of my son, as a result of you, meeting with him here, the Father said, Jesus says, I'm going, to, I'm going to answer those prayers. Because, in fact, you'll now be praying in accord and in line with and in keeping with the will of God and the word of God. Does that make sense to you? See, uh, Brother Cecil, I want you to call your pet fly. He's giving me fits up here. If, if you see me flailing my arms... I mean, that thing came out of nowhere. Should I be surprised? No, not at all. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, let's go back to our text. So look, not only, not only is abiding essential to fruit bearing, abiding is critical to answered prayer. If you're not purposing daily to abide in Christ, let me just say this. You, uh, you are not being kind to yourself. You're not being good to yourself. You, uh, let me say it more bluntly. You are your own worst enemy. If you're not abiding in Christ, not only will it be evident by fruitlessness, secondly, unanswered prayer because your prayers are not in accord in line with the mind of Christ and this is how you get the mind of Christ this the word of God it, and boy do we need the mind of Christ amen I mean we've spent too much of our lives out of our minds ha, we need the mind of Christ amen oh yes we need the mind of Christ. Now, um, 
Herein is my Father glorified, verse 8. And whether you eat, drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the what? 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Do all to the glory of God. Say, by the way, did you know that is the greatest purpose of your life as God's child is to glorify God? <laughs> there it is. In case you're wondering what the purpose of your life is as a child of God, it's to glorify God. Magnify, exalt God. Uh, now, Jesus, you know, he goes on and he says in verse number nine, as, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Um, The Bible uh, speaks about greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends, friend. Um, boy, that, that brings us right back to the top of the fruit list, doesn't it? What's, what's the first fruit? Love. And God is, what is God? God is love. God is love. And love, is, and you know, for God so loved the world that he did what? How is love expressed? He gave. He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh, go to hell, but have everlasting life. There you go. It always comes back to love. God is love. And love gives. And, and so when we think of loving that first listed fruit, it's about giving. Uh, giving our lives away that others may know Christ. And you know, that's what we were doing. <laughs> that's what we were doing yesterday. We're out there, you know constructing a, or assembling a fireworks booth, going door to door with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're, as a church, corporately mailing out thousands of gospel mailers. We're giving our lives away that others may know Christ. That's love. And, that, and that's, that's the fruit at the top of the list. Now he says, if you keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love. The importance of obedience. Abide. Uh, you'll be, you'll... Obe obedience has everything to do with abiding uh, and uh, being fruitful. Ye shall abide in, in my love even as, as I have kept uh, the example of Christ is I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. And then there's a third thing that happens. I want you to see in verse 11, the third very important, I want to say benefit, spiritual benefit of abiding in Christ. Um, verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you, now look, and boy, the world does not get this. I hope you do. That, that my what? Did you know that most of the, of the world's population is joyless? Are you aware of that? Now, 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 they're trying anything and everything out there in the world to find happiness, joy. Uh, but but it's all a dry well. It's an empty well. It, it, it just, you know, it's like the woman at the well, you know, um, that Jesus met. Wow. Here's what the world doesn't get, and I hope you get it. Let's go back and reread verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that 
These things have I spoken unto you as a reference to what, class, church? These things that I have spoken unto you is a reference to the Word of God. <clears throat> so not only are you purged, cleansed by the Word, not only, not only does abiding, uh, I'm going to say guarantee answered prayer, when you get the mind of Christ through the Word of Christ, and now your prayers are like Christ's, and God answers those prayers because you're praying in God's will. But thirdly, something else that you gain that only God can give you is whose joy? Oh, and that would be whose joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, the world it wants joy but what they fail to realize is there can be no joy outside of whose joy who is the source of all joy he says my joy it's his joy see we, we, miss, we miss those things as we gloss through, as we hurry through, as we race through, we, we miss these important tidbits. It's his joy. A lot of joyless people right now, unhappy. There's a lot of unhappy Christians. I'm so unhappy, you know. I'm, I, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be what? Full. Full. Think about that. Instead of running on half empty, you're full. Full of joy. Um, and uh, this is my commandment, that ye love one another. Uh, now, what, just a couple of closing thoughts. Uh, look at John 17, verse 13, please. John 17, probably just a page or two away. <clears throat> John 17 and verse number 13. And uh, now uh, come I to thee, and these things I speak. Again, another way of saying the word of God. In the world, that... They might have, what? My joy fulfilled in themselves. Where do you get joy? The Word of God. Where do you get answered prayer? The Word of God. Where do you get cleansed and purged so that the husbandman, the heavenly father, will actually use you because you're not dirty? The Word of God. It's all the Word of God. It's all, and now, you know, um, <clears throat> so this, this is the condition, I'm sad to say, of a lot of, uh, th th this, this is reflective of religious folks. They're connected to religion, just not Jesus. And they're trying to do it. They're trying to do it. <laughs> Ain't no fruit on this. I think dead. But, um, but over here, uh, oh, now would you look at this? Oh, wow, is that a beautiful sight right there? That's nice. That is a California nectarine. You grow some good fruit in California, amen? Pretty good almonds and pecans and, or is it pecans? I can never remember. <laughs> I tell you, say it in Georgia. <laughs> you know, uh, boy, I mean, <clears throat> this or this, which tree would you be attracted to? <laughs> Probably this one. You like fruit? 
I mean, I can press my thumb. My thumb goes right into this thing is, this thing is ready. Ready. See, that's attractive, isn't it? Yeah. That's, I could barely get this thing to church tonight. My wife threatened to eat this. I said, you cannot have that. I told her. That's a beautiful, you know, that's, um, that's a branch that's alive. And uh, it's, it's got, you know, the water of life flowing through it. And this is the result. Right there it is. Um, <clears throat> Jeremiah 15, verse 16, please. Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah, the Old Testament prophet. Chapter 15 and verse number 16. Look at this. Thousands of years ago, this is what Jeremiah, the prophet of God, knew, understood, lived. He, he was abiding in Christ. And, and look at his testimony here. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word uh, was unto me the what? The joy and rejoicing of mine heart for I'm called by thy name O Lord God of hosts uh, what is the second fruit in the in the fruit of the Holy Spirit love joy joy Jeremiah says I got joy his joy and where did I find his joy and where was I filled with his joy the word of God the Word of God. Wow. Wow. Um, well, let's see what Isaiah, I've got Isaiah down here. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 12 and uh, verse number 3. Uh, Isaiah chapter 12 and verse number 3. Therefore with Joy shall ye draw water out of the out of the wells of salvation. What are the wells of salvation? That's a reference to these. These are the wells of salvation, the living water of God's word. Now, this is what produces salvation: the word of God. And uh, right next door to our text, John 16 and verse 24, John 16 and verse number 24, uh, Jesus says, uh, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Uh, Frustrated Christians, frustrated in their prayer life, frustrated in their service, frustrated in emotionally. And what is the antidote? You're holding it. The Word of God. So... This is somebody trying to, trying to make it happen on their own. This is religion. This is somebody who's been made to feel guilty because they're not out there doing it. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, this, this pictures, this features Ah, what a beautiful picture. This is somebody who has the water of life. They're attached. They're abiding. And uh, they're, they're a branch. They're not producing. Jesus is producing. What is the purpose of the branch then? The branch serves what purpose? If not to produce, 
to bear, you understand the term bear much fruit? Bear much fruit means to put him on display. He's the attraction. That's what it means. The branch, the purpose of the branch is everything we think, do, or say represents him, putting him on display. And uh, when he's on display, people will be attracted. I, I know I'd go to a tree like this, you know. Uh, but let's close with this thought. Love. Love, that's, that's the top fruit. What is it that every, why, why did God put love as the, as the primary, the principal fruit? Every person in the world wants to be what? Wants to be loved. And I believe that's why love is at the top. I just want to be loved. Do you ever stop to think when you come here, are you hoping that you'll find God's love here? You know? Yeah. I'm hoping somebody will love me with God's love. And uh, so, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you want to transform? Do you want to see a transformation in your Christian life? Here it is. It'll transform your life by cleansing you. And if you're clean, God will pick you up and use you. Purged, cleansed. It'll transform your life, your prayer life, because... When this goes in, your prayers will come out like Jesus' prayers because you'll get a new mind, a new heart. And when you're praying like Jesus, those prayers always get answered. <laughs> and uh, joy? Yeah. Oh, I just want to be happy. I just, I just wish I could be happy. I'm so sad. I'm so depressed. I'm so discouraged. I'm so defeated. I'm so down. It's like one preacher said, I'm so low, I've got to pull my socks down to sneeze. That's pretty low, folks. That's about as low as it gets. <laughs> Don't dwell on that too long, Brother Marcel. <laughs> Some people don't wear socks, amen? <laughs> All right. Um, joy, happiness. Uh, see, God's not leading me to stand up here and beat the pulpit and say, you need to be doing this and you need to be doing that and blah, blah. You need to get into this. You get into this and the Lord gets into you. It'll happen. It'll happen. And it won't be you. It'll be him. I hope you understand the difference between <laughs> this is us trying to do it unattached from this. It ain't going to happen, folks. Not gonna happen. <clears throat> Father, we uh, thank you for these timeless truths. These are just wonderful, amazing messages that uh, I'm only now really and, and very thankfully uh, being shown by you and I'm grateful, Father. And, uh, you know, my prayer is you'll help this church to abide in Christ. Um, reconnect with God's Word and with God in prayer. Um, to uh, be cleansed by the Word so that you'll use us. You'll prune us, purge us. Uh, I mean, n nobody wants to use a dirty, filthy tool. Uh, uh, 
abide in your uh, Christ, uh, your word, uh, so that our prayers will be so reflective of the mind of Christ that you'll answer them because his word uh, literally becomes our thought process. Uh, the living word of God you know, transforms. And so that we might be fulfilled, uh, <clears throat> you know, be filled up with your joy. It's, it's not our joy. It's your joy. And that, that results from abiding in Christ, being connected to Christ by the word of God, by prayer. So help us, I pray, as a church to get back to God's word. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'd be thankful to you, Father, if you'd help us with that. We surely need it. God bless your word, I pray in Jesus' name. As we